walking in. Had some excited brothers, I think. Ready to go, ready to go. Let's see if we can get in or not. Center Visitors Complex with two very excited boys who are going to check out the C8 Corvette. They are very excited. Very excited. My hand's shaking for some reason. I think it's because my backpack's bounced on my one arm. We're going to go walk over here, see if we can get a picture of the new C8 Corvette. I know Barry's going to do a walk around of it, so that'll be pretty cool. Get a good, good, good look at it. This is what the crowd looks like after a Corvette reveal. You can't even see the Corvettes because there's so many people. But the backdrop is the Rocket Garden here at the Kennedy Space Center in Titusville, Florida. You can see uh, B1 rocket, I think it's called. Something it's a little bit baby brother of the um, Saturn rocket hanging back behind. We're waiting to see if we can get a photo because um, right back there we see all those people is where the, the Corvettes are at. And then beyond that are the rockets. So I'm going to wait and see if I can get a photo with them in the background. But I'll be waiting for a little while because there are a ton of people hanging out here. So we'll see what happens. Could be a while. Alright, so we're walking a little bit through the Space Center is a uh, cool looking meatball right here. We'll get in the background. And we can see a spinning. This is new, I haven't seen this. This is a spinning, um, oh, it's the Orion spacecraft. We'll get the meatball in a second. It'll be behind us. I hadn't gotten to see the Orion spacecraft in a long time. It was um, set up in a different way the last time we were here. So they were just circling in the background, which is pretty cool. And then there's a, a meatball back there, but we'll get it later. So there's the Journey to Mars, there's IMAX, there's the Orbit Cafe. I think what I want to check out. I'll check that out in a second. Let me check out this first. See what the prices for food is. Grilled cheese dog. Ooh, Bear would like that. Foot long hot dog. That looks like what the boys would probably want to eat. Be my next hot dog for the year. Mm. All right, so we're walking here past Ryan Capsule, which is pretty impressive. So this is what was supposed to already be going to the moon or going into space, but it kind of fell through. So it kind of it reminds me of um, if you've watched Lost in Space, it reminds me of Lost in Space. The bottom of it, it looks like that round surface. I'm not exactly sure how you were supposed to get into it, but um, it's interesting, for sure. Now we're going to walk on over here, check out what the prices are at the Orbit Cafe, trying to get an idea for lunch, because we're going to be here for a little while today. We haven't been out here in a while, so just wanted to check out some stuff, see what everything looks like. Back there is the biggest... What's it called? The biggest space store in the world. This is, was one of the first, what do I want to say, first, kind of the first things it was here at the visitor's complex. It's this big memorial that's back over there. The idea, is, oh, move here so you can see. The idea right down there was so that it could turn with the sun. Well, sadly, I don't think it has ever worked. I've seen it, I think, turned sideways maybe once, if I remember correctly, but I don't think it has ever really turned all the way around. Okay. How 
helicopter's kind of gone so we can continue with our walking, talking here. I think they're bringing people in for the event, actually, is what it looks like. Uh, back here is a mock-up. I don't know if this was actually one that was used, but a uh, training jet for the astronauts, or just one of the jets that they would have uh, used to fly back and forth between places. It's very common. Uh, there's always been, like, like F-16s, I don't think they've really used. Ooh, look, that looks cool right there, actually. Do a quick photo. All right, and then off over here is the Atlantis experience where you get to come face to face with the Space Shuttle Atlantis, which is cool, but also sad at the same time. Um, like, when you, if you've had the experience of seeing Atlantis on the pad, and you've seen Atlantis going into space, it's a little bit difficult to stand and, and watch it just sitting there. It's on display now, realizing it's never going to go into space again. Um, kind of sad in my opinion, but we'll see what the future holds for space um, aviation here. Alright, so here we are at the memorial. Down here, I believe, if I remember correctly, these are the first three names. Um, I could be wrong on that, but I think, if you can see, right here, get my hand to move, we have the names Virgil, Gus Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Chaffee. Those were three of the men, first three, who died um, endeavoring to make the space program possible. They were planning to do some of the uh, beginning missions to send men into space to um, go to the moon. They were they were part of the, the training, the, the preparation for that, and due to a fire, um, there's pure oxygen involved and something shorted, something happened, and um, the, screw, the crew escape hatch sadly did not work. It took over an hour, I believe, 30 minutes to an hour to be able to get access to them. And by that time, sadly, they had already um, died. But there are other names on this wall as well, some that I don't remember as well. Um, obviously ones that I remember fairly well are these seven names here, which are the names of the Challenger crew who died in 1986, I believe it was January of 1986. And then of course, these here, um, seven, again seven, who died on February 1st, 2003 aboard a Space Shuttle Columbia when it disintegrated on a re-entry. Um, we can get a better picture of some of these those people who are on board that shuttle. So, it's, it's amazing too, and no one realized, you know, thought about this really at the time beforehand, but their patch has a halo. And, um, you know, why that was drawn on there, no idea, but it um, seems fitting for those seven members who lost their lives. Um, one of the reasons, I mean, Challenger was a devastating um, thing to happen, but one reason why that was so devastating, um, let's see if I had the pictures here, we do, was because of Christy McLaughlin. Let's see if you can see her picture up there. Um, she was going to be, I don't remember if she was the first private citizen type of, you know, I thought it was the exact distinction, but she was going to be the first teacher in space. Um, and so there was, gonna, there was all these things planned to talk about teaching and you know, live streaming things back to Earth and, um, or videotaping, I guess. I don't think live streaming was happening as much back then. Though the moon landing was live streamed, so however, however. Um, but the idea to be able to show that and um, sadly, that did not happen. I'm gonna check, there's something else here real quick, see if we can find out what the first, the first death was. It looks like several happened in these, a couple of these men, like 1980, sorry, 1964, they would have been for the first deaths related to the space <clears throat> industry. A couple others, there were several in 1967, um, Michael Adams, Robert Lawrence, of course, the three, from um, Gus Grissom, Chaffee, and um, White. Then those on 1986, and those in 2003. So, 
sadly, they were part of history, but sadly, in a way, um, they, you know, maybe, yeah, you want to say not in a way that they anticipated, you realize that um, people who take that risk, getting into a rocket with all that fuel, all of those, the propellant, and being rocketed into space, they, they realize the risk. Um, but it's one of those things that you never really think it'll be that day. Um, so that's why it's so important to make sure you know what's going to happen to you when you die. It's very important to realize that fact that everyone will die and we need to know where we're going to go and what will happen when we die. of the heat of re-entry as you come back in the space shuttle and then walk in here see a picture of the final return home of space shuttle Atlantis to thankfully the Kennedy Space Center and then up above you get to see the belly of Atlantis all of those tiles that were placed by hand no machines these were placed on by hand to the end of the day at the Kennedy Space Center. Planning to come back, went ahead and got a season pass. So I can come back and um, visit whenever. Um, only, it only costs a little bit more if you are a Florida resident. Uh, good idea to come to. So, goodbye from where we started in the Rocket Garden.